When I look around this room, I see America's future. Our doctors, our teachers, our nurses, our engineers, our scientists, our soldiers, our congressmen, our senators, and maybe our president. I ask my colleagues to consider the plight of these young people who find themselves in a legal twilight zone through no fault of their own. They are willing to serve the country they love. All they're asking for is a chance. Well, that was Senator Dick Durbin, along with illegal immigrants that he brought to the Senate hearing on the DREAM Act this week. But was it a good idea to invite illegal aliens to this hearing? Here for a fair and balanced debate, Dan Stein, President of Federation for American Immigration Reform, and Angel Reyes, civil attorney and author of Hispanic Heresy. Thanks, guys, for being with us. Dan, I will start with you. You say that the DREAM Act, what Dick Durbin said, is making a mockery of the law. Why do you say that? Well, put aside the whole question of immigration here. You know, what ties us together as a diverse community is a basic respect for the rule of law, uh, congressionally enacted, and it's part of what ties us together as Americans. And what the senator did here is a continuation of a process of uh, abdication by the Obama administration and his allies in Congress, essentially saying we're just not, we're going to give a certain group of people the right to violate federal laws, not just immigration laws, but a lot of fraud laws related to it, while the rest of us all have to apparently respect the rule of law. What gives Senator Durbin the right to decide? What gives President Obama the right to decide that the rule of law should just be ignored for millions and millions of illegal aliens who have violated our immigration laws, want to jump the head of the line, get rewarded, get taxpayer benefits, scarce public education? Senator, uh, Secretary Napolitano, who is charged with enforcing these laws, her deputy John Morton, who runs ICE, have essentially said, if you come to this country and violate our immigration laws by the millions, you will not be deported unless you commit an independent, dangerous felony. That is not what the American people have said through Congress. That's not what the American people want. And when you go down the road of saying that basically some people do not have to respect our laws, U.S. citizens, people on my staff, were not allowed into that hearing room so that illegal aliens with no real political attachment to this community could come into a, to a congressional hearing room and take those seats. That's a, a, that's a paradigm and, for what's happening in the job market and everything else in this country right, let's get today. Angel in here. Angel, what are your, what's your reaction to this? Well, Ainsley, it's about time that the administration put a human face on the immigration issue. It, Senator Durbin and President Obama have finally put the real human faces, children, mostly teenagers that are here through no fault of their own in front of the immigration debate. And frankly, I think it's a terrific idea because prosecutors in this case have all kinds of discretion. People are not prosecuted for all manner of reasons. And in this case, Secretary Napolitano decided there'll be no prosecution. President Obama has decided the same thing, Dick Durbin. And I think it's really, really, really well past the time to put a human face on these folks' plight. They're the right kind of people that we want to keep in this country. They're pursuing either the military career or a college career, and those are exactly the folks that we want to keep right here in the United States. Now, Dan, the DREAM Act targets anyone under the age of 35 who was brought here by a parent. They're considered illegal aliens, but this would give them permanent legal status. So it is that select group that really didn't have a choice as a child, and that's what the other side is saying. What's your argument against that? Well, look, clearly Senator Durbin is going to try to pack his hearing room with people who are appear appealing on television. But the DREAM Act, if Senator Durbin were ever serious about enacting like a DREAM Act amnesty, he would actually be working to enforce the laws in a rigorous way that would give the American people the comfort that the laws would ever be enforced in the future. Secondly, the DREAM Act, the way it's drafted, applies to anybody under the age of 35 on the date of enactment, even though you could apply years later when you're 50 or 60, it, it applies to anybody who's maybe got a two-year GED degree. It's not about people going to college. And it's about people who just enroll in the military or some uniform services. Doesn't say they have to actually serve successfully. It's got all, it's basically a mass amnesty for millions of people. And Senator Durbin and his allies, Schumer mm -hmm. and others, shamelessly use these young people as a poster child to try to manipulate public opinion for what essentially is a, a mockery of a bill that will undermine immigration enforcement for right. generations. Angel, what Dan is saying essentially also is the fact that they are illegal. So to invite them to a Senate hearing, is that sending the wrong message? 
You know, it's sending a political message, no doubt. And that is that one in six Americans right now are of Hispanic origin. And in just a few years, one in four Americans will be of Hispanic origin. So clearly it's a play to those voters. But it's about time that a human face has been put on this issue. And frankly, these are exactly, like I said earlier, the right kind of people that we want to keep in America. And the DREAM Act does not equal amnesty. Let me repeat that. It is not amnesty. So everyone needs to keep that in mind. Understand that finally we put a human face on this issue. All right, Dan, I'll give you the last word. Well, I think we have to realize that if we go down the road of basically having a president and, you know, in Congress saying there are some people who simply don't have to obey our laws and the government simply will allow millions of people to break our laws, why should the rest of us every day in our lives try to adhere to U.S. law? Where do we go as a society if we're going to have this non-enforcement, selective enforcement of law for some privileged, special people? It's so unfair. Dan, Angel, thanks so much. Great debate. Have a good Sunday. Thank you. Thank you.